After Kobe's crash, his wife continued his legacy with the Mamba and Mambasita Foundation, same as Wayman Tisdale's wife, who took on work to help other families struggling with cancer after losing her power forward. Jason Collier's wife worked on heart research after Collier's heart gave out. If you've ever wondered what happened to the wives of NBA stars who have passed on, here's a list. Kicking off with Donna Harris Lewis, Reggie Lewis's wife, when Reggie Lewis collapsed on the court during a 1993 playoff game, it was like time stopped. The Boston Celtics star, known for his effortless scoring and explosive talent, was just 27 years old at the peak of his career. His sudden collapse shocked the sports world, and despite initial hopes, Reggie passed away just a few months later. Later, the world learned that an undetected heart condition, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, was behind his sudden death, leaving fans and the basketball community stunned. It was a devastating loss, not just for the NBA, but for his wife, Donna Harris Lewis, who suddenly found herself a widow, grappling with both the shock and the grief of losing her husband so unexpectedly. In those dark days, Donna found the strength to channel her pain into something that could help others, making sure that Reggie's death wouldn't be in vain. Instead of being crushed by that grief, Donna became a voice for heart health awareness, determined to spare other families from the heartbreak she had endured. She set up the Reggie Lewis Foundation, using her platform to promote cardiac screenings and support those dealing with heart disease, advocating for awareness and early detection. Through the foundation, she turned Reggie's memory into a rallying cry for health advocacy, pouring her energy into changing lives in his honor, ensuring that his legacy would make a difference. Donna's dedication didn't stop at heart health. She immersed herself in the community, championing causes beyond what Reggie might have imagined. She sought to create lasting change, leaving a mark in areas that mattered to her and Reggie, knowing he would have wanted the same. In recent years, she donated $500,000 to Boston Arts Academy, the city's only public arts high school, further reflecting her commitment to giving back. The gift would help build a fitness center named after Reggie, a place where students could not only exercise, but also find inspiration to push beyond their limits. The donation was part of a larger $1 million push for the school's Building Our Future campaign, with which Donna aimed to create new opportunities for students who often lacked access to quality resources, demonstrating that Reggie's legacy would continue to enrich and uplift future generations. Another similar case is that of Lisa Seeley, Malik Seeley's wife. Malik Seeley's name is known to anyone who loved 90s basketball. He was a versatile forward, played for multiple NBA teams, finally landing with the Minnesota Timberwolves. He was known for his agility, defense, and a signature three-point shot. In May 2000, everything changed. Malik had been celebrating teammate Kevin Garnett's 24th birthday that night when he began his drive home. But on a quiet road, a pickup truck came out of nowhere, driving the wrong way. The driver was drunk, and both vehicles collided and cut Malik's life short. The Timberwolves family and fans across the country were crush. Lisa Seeley, Malik's wife, now marks May 20th each year as a quiet day of reflection, a day just to remember to breathe. But Lisa knew she had to do something more. Out of her grief, she created the Malik Seeley Foundation, focusing on safe driving awareness and programs that supported young people, a cause she knew Malik would have championed. Through this foundation, she has pushed forward initiatives that educate people on the dangers of drunk driving. Her advocacy didn't stop there. She also became a vocal supporter of youth development programs, ensuring Malik's influence would reach beyond basketball. Every year, Lisa, their family, and Malik's fans continue his legacy through community events and educational programs. And even though the sorrow is ever-present, Lisa says her work is dedicated to Malik's lasting impact, his memory. Continuing this thread of family legacies, we reach the story of Bobby Fills, a player who, like Malik Seeley, was known not only for his talent on the court, but also for his character and integrity off of it. Bobby Fills' wife. Bobby Fills left a lasting mark in his NBA career as a guard who excelled in defense and sharpshooting from beyond the arc. Playing with teams like the Cleveland Cavaliers and Charlotte Hornets, he brought with him high intensity and focus, traits that earned him the respect of teammates and coaches. To the fans, Bobby wasn't just a scorer. He was an athlete who played with heart, giving his all to every game, to his family and the community. He was an inspiration. Then came the day in January 2000 when Bobby's life, much like Malik says, ended in a devastating accident. However, unlike Seeley, Bobby had been driving alongside a teammate after practice, reportedly speeding. He lost control, his car collided with an oncoming vehicle, and the crash killed him. For his wife, Kendall, it was a day that changed her world. Kendall channeled her sorrow into action by founding the Bobby Fills Foundation, an organization dedicated to promoting safe driving practices, especially among young people. She knew that she couldn't bring Bobby back, but perhaps she could work to prevent others from experiencing the same tragedy. It was through this deep sense of purpose that the foundation was born, with Kendall determined to turn her grief into something that could save lives.
Institute. Kendall's commitment has turned the foundation into a platform for educating people on the consequences of speeding, something she speaks about with unfiltered honesty, knowing firsthand the pain that reckless driving can cause. Beyond road safety, Kendall has also used the foundation to support youth programs and charitable efforts, focusing on providing resources and opportunities for young people in need. Her work emphasizes the values Bobby embodied, strength, resilience, and community support. Every time she speaks at a school, a youth event, or a road safety program, she keeps Bobby's legacy alive, showing that his life, though tragically cut short, can continue to inspire positive change. Through the foundation, she has turned pain into purpose, reaching countless lives and making a difference in ways that Bobby would have been proud of. Katie Collier's journey to raise awareness about heart health is next among the stories of other NBA families who've turned a loss into a message for change. Jason Collier's wife. When her husband, Jason Collier, passed away suddenly in 2005, Katie was left grappling with the unimaginable loss of her husband and the father of her children. Jason had been a promising center for the Atlanta Hawks. He stood out not just for his height and defensive talent, but for his genuine nature, which had endeared him to everyone around him. Jason's career was just beginning when tragedy struck. In the early morning hours of October 15, 2005, he unexpectedly passed away at only 28 years old due to an enlarged heart, a condition that had gone undetected. His death Death brought sudden attention to the heart disease. For Cotty, it was too late. Determined to make sure other families wouldn't face the same heartbreak, Katie founded the Jason Collier Foundation, which focuses on promoting heart health awareness and providing support to those affected by heart disease. The foundation is her way of honoring Jason's memory by educating families and young athletes about the importance of regular screenings and heart health awareness. Her dedication to this cause hasn't only honored her husband's memory, but continues to inspire others, and her advocacy has helped countless people become more informed and proactive about their help. Katie has worked tirelessly, speaking openly about her experience, sharing Jason's story, and encouraging proactive healthcare practices for athletes and non-athletes alike. Katie keeps Jason's spirit alive through her foundation and work, reminding everyone that a heart can be strong long after it stops beating. Regina Tisdale found her own path forward in honoring her husband Wayman's legacy, channeling her grief into advocacy for cancer research. Wayman Tisdale's wife, Wayman Tisdale will be remembered as a versatile power forward for the Oklahoma City Thunder, but he lived a double life. He was also known for his musical talent. He played with heart, joy, and an unmistakable spirit that made him beloved by teammates, fans, and anyone fortunate enough to cross his path. Wayman's battle with bone cancer became public in 2007. Throughout his battle with cancer, Wayman was determined to approach his challenges with a positive outlook, often saying he wouldn't let cancer take away his love for life even after the cancer began to affect his body. Regina was right by his side throughout this battle for the highs and lows. She saw firsthand the courage and the unbreakable spirit that lived in her husband. She witnessed as he continued his music, recording jazz albums, several of which were well-liked, showing that even in the toughest of times, his passion never wavered. His legacy lives on through both his athletic achievements and his beautiful contributions to music. When Wayman passed away in 2009, Regina found herself facing grief as vast as the life her husband had led. She founded the Wayman Tisdale Foundation to help support cancer research and provide assistance to families affected by cancer, especially those dealing with the financial strains of treatment. Through this foundation, Regina became an advocate for awareness, working to raise funds for research and to support families facing the immense hardships that cancer often brings. In addition to her work with the foundation, Regina shared her journey through her book, Losing My Power Forward. In the book, she provided a raw and heartfelt account of grief and how to push through like she did. Moving forward from Regina Tisdale's journey, Leah Nash's story with Moses Malone offers another look at how the people left behind carry on. Moses Malone's wife, Malone, a powerhouse center in the 1980s, dominated the game like few others, taking home three MVP titles and four championships. Life on the court was intense, and for Malone, life off the court was just as intense. In 1993, Malone faced a legal dispute with his ex-wife, Alfreda. Later on, though, he found a steadier rhythm with Leah Nash. They didn't marry or live together, but they shared a deep bond, and most importantly, a son, Micah. For Malone, who'd always had an independent streak, fatherhood felt like a grounding. Meeting Nash in 2006 seemed to center him in a way basketball hadn't entirely done. His role as Micah's dad became precious, a quieter victory in his personal life. But when Malone passed in 2015, Micah was only six, too young to fully grasp the impact his father had made in the NBA and beyond. Nash committed to raising Micah with all the memories of his father. Continuing with the tradition of legacies, we have Janice Hotterman, Daryl Dawkins' wife. 
Daryl's story began long before he met Janice. As one of the most flamboyant and energetic players in NBA history, he was renowned for his backboard shattering dunks. It wasn't until 2000 before Daryl crossed paths with Janice at a trade show. She was a single mother to Tabitha, a young girl with Down syndrome. And though she had faced her share of challenges, Janice held a quiet resilience. When she introduced Tabitha to Daryl, a bond instantly formed between the two. Not long after, Janice and Daryl married, and the family expanded with the births of Nicholas and Alexis. Off the court, Daryl's larger-than-life personality softened around his children. To Janice, he wasn't just chocolate thunder. He was a loving husband and father, deeply committed to his family values. Then, in 2015, Janice faced an unthinkable loss when Daryl suddenly passed away from a heart attack. Her world shifted overnight, yet she continued forward with remarkable strength. She currently is the owner of sports management in Allentown, where she channels her resilience into helping others, continuing Daryl's legacy while honoring the family they built together. Janice's story resembles that of another remarkable woman, Ajok Dung the widow of NBA icon Manute Bowl, Manute Bowl's wife known as one of the tallest players to ever step on the NBA courts. Standing at 7 feet 7 inches, he dominated defensively, using his height to become a powerful center who definitely left an unforgettable mark on the league. However, life wasn't just about basketball for Manute and Aja. Together, they dedicated themselves to supporting their homeland, South Sudan, through humanitarian work. Manute Ball's athletic career was cut short by health issues, eventually leading to his passing in 2010 due to complications from Stevens-Johnson syndrome and kidney failure. Yet Aja has carried on his legacy Legacy, helping to continue the work he began. Through their humanitarian initiatives, they aim to provide hope and opportunity to the youth of South Sudan. Manute always viewed his role in the NBA as a platform to help his country, and Ajok has kept that vision alive with tireless dedication since her husband's death. Ajok and Manute's story is as much about family as it is about philanthropy. Their son, Bol Bol, has followed in his father's footsteps, joining the ranks of professional basketball players, a sport that now holds significant meaning for South Sudan, thanks in no small part to the influence Manute had on the sport's popularity back home. Ajok often speaks with pride about the South Sudanese national basketball team, named the Bright Stars, who represent their homeland with pride and tenacity. For her, every player on that team carries a piece of Manute's dream, a dream of a future thriving, proud, and unified South Sudan. And as Ajok Dung spoke of her husband Manute's strength and legacy, it's hard not to recall the story of another NBA giant's wife, Mel Turpin's wife. Melvin was known as much for his rebounding and defensive grit as he was for his warm, easygoing nature. Standing as an imposing center, he had a talent for controlling the paint, grabbing rebounds, and stopping players in their tracks. Melvin's game reminded you of the effort and sweat it took to be someone who fans would always remember. Off the court, however, like so many athletes, he struggled to find a place in the world once the final whistle had blown on his career. The transition was challenging, and although he'd once seemed unbreakable, his struggles increased after fully stepping away from the sport he loved. His later years became an uphill battle with physical and emotional challenges, a side of his life most fans never saw. In 2010, Melvin's struggle ended in death. Though his wife, Carrie Turpin, has stayed out of the public eye since his passing, she was undoubtedly a steady presence in Melvin's life during his playing days. Carrie was there for his rise, the cheers of the fans, and the adrenaline of game days. But when the noise faded, she was also there for the quiet, tougher moments, supporting Melvin as he navigated the highs and lows of his journey. Not much is known about her life after his passing, but her role in Melvin's life Life has always been of silent strength. Next, we talk about the NBA wife that featured in a music video, Anthony Mason's wife. Anthony Mason didn't just play the game, he made every second on the court count, especially for the New York Knicks. Known for his fierce, never back down style, Mason wasn't just a body under the hoop, he was a force. Someone who played with grit that set the tone for his entire team. You'd see him tussling, scrapping for every rebound, always ready to go toe to toe with anyone who dared challenge him. Off the court though, Mason's life was anything but ordinary. There was Monica Bryant, the mother of his son Anthony Jr., and a big part of the personal drama that followed him. In 2015, Mason passed away from heart failure, shocking fans and players alike. She would be eventually linked to a well-known story in hip-hop. It came out that Biggie Smalls' track, I Got a Story to Tell, which narrates a wild night with another man's girlfriend, was likely inspired by Junior's mother, Monica Bryant. Now for perhaps the saddest loss on this list, Ricky Berry's wife. Ricky Berry was more than just a name on a jersey. He was a bright talent in the NBA, a guard for the Sacramento Kings who could light up the court. Imagine a 6, 8 inches player with the kind of shooting ability that made defenders sweat. He burst onto the scene in his rookie season, showcasing skills that hinted at stardom. The kid was going to be a star, former Kings coach Jerry Reynolds said. That was the hope everyone had, but life had other plans. Ricky was just starting to find his footing in the league when he married Valerie, a woman who didn't even realize what she was getting into at first. Their meeting was a bit of a setup, courtesy 
jealousy of his sister. But what started as an awkward introduction turned into something beautiful. Valerie, then a student at Cal Berkeley, wasn't initially starstruck. In fact, she had to buckle her seatbelt on one of their early dates because Ricky drove like he was racing against time. But soon, his charm and quick smile won her over, and they were married just two years later. Then came that fateful summer in 1989. Ricky had just finished his rookie season and was ready to embrace his future. But everything changed in an instant. On August 14th, his life ended tragically in their home, a heartbreaking twist that left everyone reeling. You think back and wonder, were there signs? A columnist lamented, capturing the confusion and shock that gripped those who knew Ricky after news of his suicide broke. For Valerie, the days that followed were a blur of grief and unanswered questions. I had no idea, she said, reflecting on their relationship and the love they shared. 20 years later, she's still grappling with his absence, yet she has transformed her pain into a mission. Living in Sacramento again, she works tirelessly for mental health advocacy, striving to ensure others don't suffer in silence like Ricky did. Through her work, Valerie honors Ricky's memory, reminding everyone of the struggles hidden behind a smiling face. Continuing from the impactful legacy of Ricky Berry, we shift gears to another remarkable figure in the basketball world, Jack Twyman, Jack Twyman's wife. Just like Ricky, Jack wasn't just known for his scoring prowess on the court, but for his heart off it. Standing tall as a forward for the Cincinnati Royals, Twyman was recognized for his versatility and toughness, often finding ways to score and assist his team in clutch moments. In a league that was starting to take shape, he made a name for himself, averaging over 30 points per game during the 1959-60 season alongside Wilt Chamberlain. But Jack's story goes beyond statistics. It took a tragic turn in 1958 when his teammate, Morris Stokes, suffered a paralyzing brain injury during during a game. Imagine the scene in which Twyman is watching as his friend is knocked out cold after hitting the court hard, and then he sees him struggle to even communicate. Back then, the league had little understanding of head injuries. The support systems we see today were non-existent. With Stokes unable to care for himself and nearly destitute, Jack stepped up in a way few would. He became Stokes' legal guardian, a role that demanded not just love, but relentless dedication. Twyman organized charity games featuring basketball superstars to raise funds for Stokes' medical care. Can you picture it? Legends of the game come together. Not not just for competition, but to support one of their own. His advocacy didn't stop there. Jack tirelessly campaigned for Stokes' induction into the Hall of Fame. For years, he pushed for recognition of his friend's contributions to the game. Finally, in 2004, after decades of effort, the Hall of Fame acknowledged Stokes' talent, and there was Twyman accepting the award on his behalf, filled with emotion. Jack's life came to an end in 2012 due to complications from blood cancer. And finally, perhaps the NBA's biggest loss ever, Kobe Bryant's wife. We arrive at the unforgettable story of Kobe Bryant, legendary shooting guard for the Los Angeles Lakers, often hailed as one of the greatest to ever play the game. Over the course of a remarkable 20-year career, he wrote his name into NBA history, winning five championships and earning the MVP award in 2008. His talent, work ethic, and competitive spirit redefined what it meant to be an athlete, earning him a global fan base and pop culture icon status. Kobe's journey wasn't without its challenges. From the moment he entered the league straight out of high school, the expectations were monumental. In his rookie year, he dazzled with flashes of brilliance, but faced growing pains. As he developed under the watchful eye of legends like Shaquille O'Neal, his skills blossomed. The duo led the Lakers to three consecutive championships from 2000 to 2002, a testament to their synergy and determination. Yet, despite the accolades, there were struggles behind the scenes. The transition to being the sole star after Shaq's departure brought its own pressures. The Lakers faced ups and downs, but Kobe remained unshaken. He would often take matters into his own hands, leading the league in scoring in multiple seasons. One of the most iconic moments came in 2006 when he dropped 81 points against the Toronto Raptors, a game that will forever be remembered in NBA lore. In 2019, tragedy struck when Kobe, his daughter Gianna, and seven others lost their lives in a helicopter crash. Kobe was just 41 and the loss of his daughter, a promising basketball star, was heartbreaking. From the ashes of the tragedy, Vanessa Bryant, Kobe's wife, came out as a powerful figure, advocating for numerous causes, including women's empowerment and youth sports. Together, Kobe and Vanessa established the Kobe and Vanessa Bryant Family Foundation. After his death, it was renamed the Mamba and Mamba Sita Foundation, honoring Kobe and Gianna's legacies. This foundation aims to uplift communities through educational initiatives and sports programs, striving to keep Kobe's spirit alive. After Kobe's passing, the foundation gained significant traction. By the end of 2022, it boasted over $27 million in net assets. However, reports highlighted a discrepancy between its earnings and expenditures. Despite bringing in 
nearly $13 million in contributions, the foundation spent only a fraction, around $481,953, on program expenses, primarily focused on refurbishing basketball courts across nine states. The majority of its budget went towards legal and administrative costs. Vanessa's commitment to ensuring the foundation honors Kobe and Gianna's memories has been unwavering. After winning a $16 million jury verdict against Los Angeles County for the improper sharing of photos from the crash site, she pledged to donate the entire amount to the foundation. In 2023, the foundation partnered with several prominent college athletic departments to further its mission. Players at universities like USC and Duke wore Nike Kobe sneakers during the season, a tribute to Kobe's influence on the game by the next generation of athletes. If you enjoyed this video, check out one of these boxes playing on your screen for more interesting stories like this.